Ever wanted to chart your career path into the world of architect roles, but found yourself tangled in the crossroads of solutions architect and infrastructure architect? Today, we are unlocking the mystery behind these two popular and exciting career options from a responsibilities point, salaries, and other differences in our video, solutions architect versus infrastructure architect, all you need to know. Let's get right into it and start with understanding who these architects are, shall we? If I was to use an analogy, you know, I love those, I'd say that a solutions architect is kind of like a superhero translator. They speak both business and technology fluently. And as we say it time and times again in this channel, a solutions architect's job is a customer facing job. So SA's job is to craft intricate solutions across multiple platforms to meet business needs with a wide view of the tech landscape. They're the broad picture people. Jim would handle the day to day and Michael, you would focus on clients and big picture stuff. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. I like that. If a solutions architect is a superhero translator, infrastructure architect would be a cloud conqueror. They're the specialists who build and manage the organization's cloud architecture and protect it against its enemies. Okay, enough with the silliness. I summarize the differences between the two roles in these five points. So let's explore them one by one. A solutions architect is generally focused on delivering specific solution designs and architectures to solve particular business problems using a comprehensive understanding of multiple platforms and technologies. Conversely, a cloud infrastructure architect is more directed towards designing and managing a company's cloud computing architecture, focusing almost exclusively on cloud-based structures. Solutions architects and infrastructure architects diverge significantly when it comes to their areas of specialization. A solutions architect, SA, is like a Swiss army knife in the tech world. They are well-versed in multitude of areas. To illustrate, back when I was a solutions architect at a leading e-commerce giant, my responsibilities extended from deciphering business needs engineering bespoke software solutions coming to you live from the moon. This is actually a good idea. Okay, so you're saying that, yeah, because we can store it and then, but if we store it, we should become the source of truth and then we should build APIs to whoever wanna consume this. And are we ready to do that? Are we ready to support this? To working with different technologies, different platforms, and even different cloud services. A meeting where I will be presenting SaaS Boost, one of AWS's reference architectures that help deploy SaaS applications into the cloud. And so one of the teams uh, in the company is looking for a solution like this to deploy and manage one of their workloads. And so I will be jumping on a presentation with them. I've been preparing these slides. I'll be um, explaining the solution. I'll be trying to answer questions that they might have. And yeah, we'll decide together afterwards whether SaaS Boost is the right solution for their problem or we'll keep looking. Alongside this, I was communicating directly with clients to understand their specific requirements and organize the delivery of suitable solutions. I did not specialize in every single area, but my role required knowledge across various domains. Now on the flip side, I consider my current role as an infrastructure architect as a specialty role, laser focused on mastering a specific domain, which is security related cloud services. To picture this, my, my day to day uh, tasks revolve around designing, implementing and managing the company's cloud infrastructure. I don't just dabble in the world of AWS, Terraform among others, I actually live in it. For instance, I might be tasked with re-architecting an on-premises workload to be cloud native, or uh, tweaking the cloud infrastructure to optimize costs and performance. So my level of knowledge and expertise as an infrastructure architect is expected to be deep, but it applies primarily to the cloud-based system I am supposed to work on. 
a solutions architect is generally more focused on innovation and strategy, usually developing new systems or modifying existing ones to create overall solutions that align with business needs. On the other hand, an infrastructure architect is frequently more focused on the execution ensuring proper deployment, proper maintenance, security, and performance of the cloud infrastructure or whatever other uh, infrastructure the workloads are running on. Now, in most organizational structures, the role of a solutions architect involves a level of project management where they coordinate resources, they manage timelines, they ensure the final delivery. As we always say, great essays drive the adoption of their solution once designed. They don't just stop at designing it. But an infrastructure architect operates mostly within the defined scope of the infrastructure project and does not typically handle generalized project management. Fifth and finally, solutions architects usually have decision-making authority, um, choosing the best technologies, choosing the best platforms, uh, and also the best designs to meet business needs. But on the other hand, cloud infrastructure architects are more likely likely to implement decisions made by others regarding which cloud solutions the company should use. Now, as you can see, both roles are essential, but they hold different placements in the technology realm. Whether one chooses to be a generalist or a specialist depends largely on personal interests, career aspirations, also the economic situations we're going through, as I explored in this video where I shared the reasons that made me switch my role only recently. Now, a question that a lot of you ask me in the comments is about career paths. Basically, how do I become a solutions architect? So let's explore two career paths that any software engineer can follow to become first a solutions architect, and then we'll do infrastructure architects after that. So you start as a junior software engineer, developing software applications, understanding business requirements, and also solving basic software problems. And then after that, you wanna to progress to senior software engineer, which means you are taking on more responsibilities in leading projects, in overseeing junior engineers, and also gaining a deeper understanding of system design and architecture. After that, you can transition to a position of a technical lead or a software software architect, which means that you are now in charge of design, development of complex software systems, often uh, coordinating with multiple engineering teams. And after that, you can make the move into the solutions architect role where you will be expected to design complex systems, complex solutions requiring a solid understanding of business needs and objectives. And these are some of the certifications that could significantly enhance your journey and marketability. Second, to go from a software engineer to infrastructure architect, you can follow this suggested path. So you start as a junior software engineer, you know, your initial focus would be on coding, debugging, gaining a solid foundation in software development. Then you progress to senior software engineer to begin to specialize in cloud technologies, uh, build large scale system designs, network security, then after that, you probably want to move towards a cloud engineering role or a, a DevOps engineer role, which basically is a role that uh, focuses on managing and implementing cloud services in a given organization, but also managing cloud migrations and optimizing existing cloud structures. And eventually you move into the cloud infrastructure architect role where you will be designing the cloud infrastructure of an entire organization, but also making decisions about cloud providers, specific services, security, and overall cloud strategy. And these are some certifications that could significantly enhance your journey and improve your marketability. Now remember, this trajectory can vary between individuals and organizations and certifications while helpful are only one piece of the puzzle. You know, actual hand-on experience, networking, personal projects, and continuous learning can significantly influence these career paths. And now onto the real question, the mullah. <laughs> Maybe there's, I'm just gonna say it in a normal way. And now onto the real question, the salaries. So the salary of both SA and IA can vary significantly depending on many factors like years of experience, geographical location, 
and specific industry. But as of the time of this video, we can consider some average salaries in the United States for comparison. According to ZipRecruiter, the average salary for a solutions architect in the United States is around $130,000 annually as of 2021. But salaries can vary between $84,000 and $173,000. Now for the infrastructure architect role, according to Payscale, the average salary in the United States is around 126,000 per year as of 2021. But this can also vary roughly between 87,000 and 172. It should be noted that some experienced architects, especially in large corporations or in high demand regions, might have a significantly higher income. Other benefits such as bonuses, profit sharing, or stock options are not included in the figures above, but can potentially add considerable value to the overall compensation package. This is gonna be it for today. Anything I didn't cover, let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Until next time, let's architect a brighter future, shall we?